Okay, I'm recording. Okay. So I've got the asked this lovely question. It's actually very beautiful and it's kind of obvious as a course student. Um, so um, it's like you, you hear your neighbor and they're going on about, um, you know, they're, they're often what I call ego. Uh, the, the ego is trying to juice something, you know, how terrible my life is or self-pity or I'm a victim or whatever it is. And then, um, and then it's like something doesn't want to believe or get involved in that story and not even see the story and not even see that the story is real, uh, almost like discounting it from a higher level. Uh, and it doesn't want to engage from an ego level with the, the juice that the, uh, the other person's trying to milk out of their, their ego suffering. So um, now lesson 14 of A of Course in Miracles says, God did not create it, it is not real. Uh, I would say God did not even create this world. It is not real. So this world is, I would, in my 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 view, is is like a, it's like a school or a place of infinite lessons, until there's no more lessons to learn, until one is has transcended all limited lessons to the infinite. So as, if you're especially a course in miracles, it says that the ultimate is infinite, timeless, beyond form. Um, so that's the real. Uh, and there's no separation, this is a holy instant, meaning there's only a, an instant of oneness. There is no me and you that exists in the whole. If we're one, then two of us cannot exist at that level. So, um, so one has to be in a more ego-identified body, think, personal story thing to perceive others, uh, to perceive others as... Um, as, as their story being uh, feeling real. If I'm identified heavily with my story and my feelings and, and my body, then automatically I project that other people must be, what they're experiencing must be real for them because that's how I identify myself. Now, if I identify myself as infinite beyond this world, not really this body or this story or these feelings, it, uh, as you do the course, you, be, you become you become protected at certain levels of consciousness. It's almost like now that you're one with the angels, now that you're one in the infinite, it doesn't really want to go down to wallowing in people's stories and people's identification with heaviness. It almost wants to defend itself. You know, these thoughts are not real. Uh, duality, separation and suffering is not real. Often you'll hear enlightened teachers start giggling and laughing. They couldn't start uh, stop because it's not in a cruel way, but they see the, the comicalness of people suffering their story uh, and the collective uh, bizarre things that go on in this world when you get, they get too heavily identified. So, so I think that's the most beautiful thing. Uh, I mean, it's not to not not to be horrible to other people, but almost like an inner defense, not to get caught up in their emotions, not to see what's happening as real, and almost to be on another level. Uh, so it's almost like being in the world, but not of the world. You're in the realm of light, um, but you're not, you're not sort of in darkness and not really, uh, and you're almost like you're protected against entering other people's darkness. So that's the most beautiful, it's a grace. It's like being protected by angels. I wouldn't take it lightly. I mean, you learn, if you're having these experiences as new, um, it takes a while, but then you learn to sort of offer some support to others without letting them know what's happening for you. Like you, you're not really, it's like you're not touched by their suffering. Uh, and, uh, but you can be there, you can be positive. Uh, and later on, you can offer illuminated advice. Uh, to them uh, uh, in, in, a, in a language that they'll be able to relate to from your level. Uh, when I met, uh, when I met my, um, when I met uh, uh, Dr. Hawkins, you know, I said, look, I've got, you know, my stories, I've got kidney failure, I've got dialysis, uh, I've got asthma, I've got gout, how can I be free? I mean, he, he was laughing and making jokes. And I was laughing. I mean, it was such a high, in, he was coming from the infinite realm of like, you know, he was nowhere there. He wasn't in his body. He had, he had felt that and I laughed. It was so powerful, that laugh, that I laughed as well. And I forgot all my suffering, you know, as I entered that place where he was. So it's very, very powerful. It wasn't insincere. It was like uh, there is a place 
where none of this exists, which is of absolute freedom and light. So, but you, you learn eventually with time just to be able to be in your level, be in the light and yet talk to people wherever they're at uh, without dropping your level. Um, and I would say on that as well, um, I don't, you know, I think you're a great, I think I, I, I mean, I would be a greater blessing to the world to stay in the light and learn to communicate with people, whatever level they're at in a language they understand. Then for me to leave the light and join in with their, uh, and try and resonate with their um, suffering. Because uh, for me then, if you uh, the, the light has the power of miracles, but my, my being in fear and 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 darkness doesn't isn't really a great um, a great positive for myself and others. But it, I mean, I don't want to mis be misunderstood that not to have compassion for others is not what I'm saying. Um, oh yes, sorry. So the course in miracles, God did not create; it's not real. You know, when I had my white light experience with Muji, uh, you start to see. I'll explain that that it's not real uh, in a bit more depth. Uh, for uh, course students. So when I went to meet Muji and I said, look, I'm aware of an observer behind me. I was in a one-to-one -one with him. And he just said, well, what's behind that observer? Is there something there? And the whole world disappeared in infinite light. I disappeared, the world disappeared. And the experience was that there, it was light at a level, light, love, and power at the level of, of infinity would be the closest way I could so it's, it's obvious that no time, no me, no you, no darkness, no color can exist because the intensity of light is just so immense and so beautific. So no form or shadow or darkness can exist. So there is a place I would say where this world does not exist. And as you get to the higher realms, not even color exists. I mean, it's that high in light, but as you get to like the holy instant for me is oneness where I've now dissolved the idea I'm in this body and you're in that body and we're in separation. So that would be a lower order. And then you get the lower that the levels of ego down, which is more body identification, more personal story and more fear, guilt, shame uh, going down the levels of consciousness. Okay, so 